Good morning, Franklin fourth grade. This is Mrs. Morris here coming at you with another ELA lesson. This ELA lesson are, is page 36 and 37 in your packet called Similes and Metaphors. And it looks like this. And this page here is your guided practice where we are going to work through this page together. We're going to have some examples and I'm going to read to you some authentic uses of figurative language, similes and metaphors from a story. This page 37 is going to be your independent practice, this page. This is the page we expect you to do on your own without help from moms or dads or an older brother or sister or neighbor or friend. So this is how we, this is how we can tell if you've really learned what we're talking about here. So I first want to read you the introduction on page 36, all about similes and metaphors. Authors sometimes help readers imagine what one thing is like by comparing it to something else. Comparisons can help readers picture what's being described by showing how two things are alike in some way. That's what we call making a movie in your mind. When you read a story, authors really want you to make a movie in your mind, picturing what's happening, seeing the scenes as they are written in a story. Metaphors help us do that with um, a more exact vision of what something looks like. First of all, figurative language is um, uh, just the way, it's a type of um, language authors use to write, so it's not, it's not so boring. It makes things more exciting, more interesting to listen to. Two types of figurative language, there's more than these two, but two of them that we're gonna talk about today are similes and metaphors. A simile uses the words like or as to compare two things. So one example that I was talking about earlier is in a story, an author can write, the two girls were friends. And you don't know, are they close friends? Are they um, just kind of casual friends? Do they just see each other at school? Are they together all the time? Do they like the same things? He might use this simile to explain the type of friendship the girls have so you could get a better picture in your mind. The girls are like two peas in a pod. And we know peas in a pod are close together. They're always together. They're never apart. They look exactly alike. They are exactly alike. So these girls, you can picture their friendship as being really close. They do the same things. They like the same things. They're always together. That gives us a better vision of what their friendship is like. You are as wise as an owl. That's a saying we've all heard before. It explains how wise you are. Owls are known to be the wisest animals in the forests. And so it's not just you're kind of smart or a little smart. You're so wise, you're as wise as an owl. And it helps you to understand the way a certain character might be in a story, a certain character trait. Another figurative language we're gonna talk about today's metaphors. Metaphors compare two things by saying one is the other. It doesn't use the words like or as. But it doesn't really matter. Sometimes they interchange with each other. You just need to know that similes and metaphors help more specifically describe what the author is trying to say in a story. An example of a metaphor here, mom was a real bear this morning. That means his mom was super grumpy or super mean this morning. But describing it like a bear might help you visualize the way the mom woke up. Not just a little bit upset, but grumpy. Over here, the lake water was a mirror below our boat. You can picture that, can't you? Picture sitting out on the lake. The water was so still that you could see your reflection clear like a mirror. There weren't even ripples coming through to interrupt your reflection. That is a really great way of describing a lake. And what's that picture in your mind? I'm gonna read to you from the one and only Ivan again. This is gonna be my go-to book because it has a lot of great figurative language in here. There's a chapter in here. Um, it starts on page 27 called Stella. Stella says she is sure I will see another real live gorilla someday. I believe her because she is even older than I am and has eyes like black stars and knows more than I will ever know. 
She has eyes like black stars. Well, are Stella's eyes black stars? No. But we know that the author is trying to get us to really understand what Stella's eyes look like by comparing them to the stars. So that tells me that her eyes are dark black, but they must have a twinkle in them, a beautiful little twinkle that makes her someone that we can look at and trust and someone who cares for Ivan. So those black stars, that description, they're not just plain black and dead looking. They've got a twinkle. So it gives us a vision of what Stella's like. It's a movie in our mind. Stella is a mountain. Next to her, I am a rock, and Bob is a grain of sand. Hmm. Stella really a mountain? No, but she's huge. Is Ivan really a rock? No, but the author is using a metaphor to describe him and to describe Bob. Mountain, rock, grain of sand. You can picture their sizes compared to one another because the author used a metaphor. If you are a circus elephant and you stand on your hind legs while a dog jumps on your head, you get a treat. If you do not, the claw stick comes swinging. Elephant hide is thick as bark on an ancient tree. Ooh, is as thick as bark on an ancient tree. Oh, that's a simile. Elephant hide is as thick as bark on an ancient tree. We know that trees get thicker and thicker as they get older ancient. It's a really old tree, so we've got a picture of very thick, tough bark. That's what elephant hide is. It isn't like your skin and my skin. It's really thick and strong. But a claw stick can pierce it like a leaf. A leaf is delicate. That means a claw stick can hurt even that tough skin as if it was going through a thin, brittle leaf. See how the author uses similes to help put a picture in our mind on what that claw stick must be like for Stella? And the last one. Once Stella saw a trainer hit a bull elephant with a claw stick. A bull is like a silverback, noble, contained, calm like a cobra is calm. When the claw stick caught in the bull's flesh, he tossed the trainer into the air with his trough. I'm sorry, with his tough. The man flew, Stella said, like an ugly bird. She never saw the bull again. There was a lot of similes and metaphors in that paragraph alone. I told you when we first started reading this in room 151 that Catherine Applegate, the author of this book, she doesn't waste words. The whole book is very visual and wants you to picture what is happening and really feel it. So using figurative language can let an author do that. But here in this last paragraph, a full elephant, that's a male elephant, is like a silverback, noble, contained, and calm like a cobra. So you can picture it. She's he is not emotional. He is not um, running all over the place crazy. He's calm. He's contained. Very noble. Picture like a cobra sitting and waiting. But when that claw stick hits the bull's flesh, he tossed the trainer into the air with his tusk. The man flew like an ugly bird. You can. He didn't fly through the air like a beautiful acrobat or a gymnast. You look like an ugly bird flying. It really gives a picture in your mind. That's a great simile for how that man probably went flying through the air. Now when you go do your pages, you're going to read examples here and you're going to work through the examples. Um, you're going to find a simile or metaphor in each sentence. Underline the two things being compared then write the meaning of the simile or metaphor. So number one, Ollie's mouth was a trap that held a giant stick. So you would underline mouth and trap. That's what we are describing the mouth as a trap. And what does that mean? 
Have you ever dog, gone up to your dog and tried to get a stick out of their mouth? Can't do it. You wiggle that dog around. Well, the mouth is being compared to a trap. That means it's, it's, it's clamped down and you can't get whatever is in it out. So what you're going to do in that sentence is underline mouth and trap and then just underneath describe what the metaphor means. The mouth was so, shut so tight like a trap you couldn't open it. You're going to do that for one through four, and if you want help, you can get help, and then one through five on the next page you'll do on your own. Good luck. You could always message your teacher if you need any other help, and we will be seeing you soon. Take care, fourth grade.